And welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael DeLon, and today I am talking with Ryan Morrissey. Ryan, thank you for squeezing me into your calendar today. Yes, my pleasure. Happy to be here. Well, it, it's going to be a fun conversation. Ryan is a... Um, well, he's, a, he's a financial advisor, but he, he his passion is to help people who are 50 and older, so I fit in that category, um, really plan well for retirement, help them reduce taxes, invest smarter, and, and have a, a, a great game plan. And so that's Correct. what we want to talk about today. And so as, as we get ready just to take a deep dive here, Ryan, tell me, how in the world did you get to doing what you do today? Yeah, yeah. Um... So a little bit of hard work and a little bit of luck. Um, so I studied economics in college, wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Ended up having an internship for a financial advisor between my junior and senior year. Fell in love with it. He said, hey, go get a job with Morgan Stanley or Merrill Lynch. They had great training programs. Apply to both, get a job at Morgan Stanley, do my training. And I was actually supposed to be in the, the World Trade Towers uh, on 9-11. Um, the reason I wasn't was because I didn't pass my Spanish class senior year could only miss you could only miss five classes 8 a.m every day i kept putting off taking this class senior year i think i'm on cruise control hit the snooze button too many times too many late nights and uh, i delayed my start date with morgan stanley so by the grace of god i wasn't in the trade towers on 9 11 or maybe i wouldn't be here today absolutely wow what a story yeah so that's that's how i got my start and um you know um I, i've been Continue to do this. It's the only thing I've ever done for uh, 22 years as a financial advisor. That's awesome. Well, that's longevity there. And that's really cool to have that kind of longevity because you, you've seen some ups in the market. You've seen some downs. You've seen some oh, yeah. stops and some goes. And and that that's really important as people start planning for retirement. And let, let's dive into some of the fears, some of the concerns people have when they're 50. Because I don't know if everybody's like me, Ryan, but I have not done a great job planning for it. I've got sure. some stuff away, but some of these things like taxes, we don't know what that's going to be, inflation, all that. How do you help people? What are some of the things they struggle with? There are questions, and how do you help them kind of put together a good plan that, that's unique to them? Sure. So first thing is just figuring out how much you need, right? If you know that you you spend, let's say, $50,000 a year now, well, that would presumably be your goal for retirement. So kind of backing into those numbers, looking at, all right, what are you going to get from Social Security? Maybe you're eligible for a pension and then figuring out the difference. And that's the money that you need to save up, whether that be, you know, in your 401k or your Roth IRA or wherever you're going to save it. That's kind of just a starting point. Okay. All right. And then do, do you find people come to you kind of uh, fearful is the word I'm looking at or thinking of is when it comes to A, am I going to have enough? B, are taxes going up? Do, do people have these questions or are they not even thinking about these things? No, they do. I mean, I'd say, I guess it all depends, right? We all have different moments in life where something happens and it kind of shakes us. Like yeah. I think when you hit 50, maybe or your early fifties, you start realizing, well, maybe I've only got 10 or 15 years left of working. So I've got to get serious about planning my retirement. Um, you know, or it could be like a, a friend says, Hey, I'm retiring. And you're like, wait a minute, you're only 55 years old. How are you retiring? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've had a good financial plan or a good financial advisor. Um, so it's, it's all of us hit these different points where something happens and we, we kind of look at something differently. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one thing uh, that, you know, I, and I'd love just to dive into this, right. In, in retirement, you, you know, you help people develop and implement a, a plan, which I really that's right. Yeah. Appreciate and admire because I think a lot of people kind of do it ad hoc or throw it on the wall or I've got this or I've got that. Talk yeah. a little bit about some or maybe some of the elements that you that you work with people in developing a plan and why why is it so important to have a plan that that I, I assume can flex a little bit as you as you walk through this. That's thing. right. Yeah. I mean, so um I teach an adult education class. That's been my primary way of getting out the word about what I do. So over two nights, I teach a class that two, three hour sessions that covers the gamut on investment, social security, Medicare, estate planning, saving for retirement. And I recently put that class online. So if people go okay. to retirewithryan.com forward slash on demand, they uh -huh. can actually take that course. And like as a special benefit to your listeners, if they put the code in DeLone25, they uh -huh. can actually get 25% off the cost of that class. 
Okay. Um, so it's a small investment, but within the class, you know, or what people should be focusing on is as we first talked about figuring out how much they need to save. Um, but then also looking at their investments because a lot of people, you know, are not investing their money properly. They're either paying unnecessary fees or not taking on the, the right amount of risk. So that's important as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how do you, how do you help people? Uh, I mean, dude, there are voices out there. There yeah. are lots of voices, some on TV, some on the internet, some are at the, at the water cooler, right? Everybody sure. has their opinion yeah. on what you should be doing. How do you help? How, how do you, how do you breathe counsel into people and, and say, yeah, here's what everybody's saying, but what's your situation in, in here are all the, here are all the products, but it's not sure. it's less the product and more the plan. Is that, is that right? No, it is. So like, there's a big difference um, in being a fee only financial planner and really being a commission based financial planner. So I'm what's considered a fee only financial planner. Okay. Uh, unpack, I only get paid. Those yeah. Two. yeah. Those. So I only get paid by the fees my clients pay me. So clients either pay me a flat fee to work together okay. or they pay me a percentage of their portfolio to manage it. Okay. Whereas in either situation, if I say, listen, Michael, you really should save more into your 401k or you need this insurance or you need to go do this estate planning. It's not because I'm getting paid an additional commission or fee to do that. It's because you've paid me for my advice and I believe that's what's best for you. So that's one thing that people can do to try to help cut through a lot of the noise and really try to get the best advice is by working with a fee only financial planner or financial okay. advisor. Okay. All right. So, so that, that makes sense because then you're, you're coming on board in a sense as a, as a consultant. That's right. Yeah. Okay? And, and there, there's, you're, you're not, um, you're not getting money. Yeah, you're not getting money to sell an insurance program or something. You don't get money there. You get money when your client's portfolio grows. That's right. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you. Some people say like, you know, you you we make more money when you make money, and that is true, right? And and so that you're incentivized there. Yeah. But it's not also, hey, you make money, but we make extra money that you don't know about. <laughs> that sends <laughs> us on a special trip or vacation. Yeah. Um, and maybe in the process, like what we did with your money was not the best thing for you. So that's the problem is that a lot of the people that are pushing things that are outside the norm yeah. are really incentivized to do it. And you see it a lot with insurance, um, different like limited partnerships that these people are highly compensated to sell these products or promote these strategies rather than just focusing on really the basics and, and is what I you know encourage my clients to do. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's really good because the basics are fundamental and they don't change very much, right? That's right. And, they don't. Yep. When and when you have a good plan, you work with Ryan or listen to his podcast, which we'll link you to and everything. But yeah, um, you're going to get an education, and that's why I appreciate your approach. Is you're you're very educational in your approach, and and I think that's good because when we're when you have an educated client, you have a, you have a better client. That's right. Yeah. I mean. If you talk to me, you know, today or five years from now, like my views aren't going to change. Um, you know, I've developed these views over 20 years of doing this and seeing, you know, what works and what doesn't, but also cutting away the noise because I didn't start as a fee only financial planner. Like I started at Morgan Stanley. I was both working as a broker and a financial advisor. And, you know, as I grew and I learned, I realized really it was a better solution for my client and a better fit for, you know, advising them to be a fee only financial planner. So I made that move about five years ago. Um, and I truly believe in that and really think like most people would be better off, you know, focusing on that type of relationship. Yeah. So let, let's talk about some of the, um, maybe the big rocks in retirement. So, so talk to somebody who's 50, 55, 60 sure. business owner, and they may or may not have put a bunch of things in place for retirement, but what are some of the big rocks that a, they need to be thinking about that maybe your online course works them through? Yeah. Some well, definitely you know, saving enough, right? And as a small business owner, probably the best way to do that is through a, a small business 401k or a solo 401k, mm -hmm. because within that plan, it allows you the standard 401k limit with this year. If you're over 50, it's $30,000, which mm -hmm. is a lot of money that you can, you can do pre-tax if you want, but then you can also put a profit sharing component above and beyond that 
which allows you an additional amount. I think it's 68,000 total. So an additional $38,000. So if you're looking, if you've really been putting all your money back into your business or you just haven't had the money to save and you're looking to jumpstart your retirement, that would be something to focus on, a 401k profit sharing plan for a small business owner. That's very cool. See, profit sharing right there, that's only for big business, Ryan. What are you talking about? It's things <laughs> like that that yeah. Ryan can help you with. As you're listening to this, He's got so much knowledge. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced, Ryan, you have forgotten more about financial planning than most of us <laughs> I will like ever that. know. I put, I put that on my on my business card. <laughs> I've forgotten more than you'll ever know. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's little things like that to go. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Profit sharing? I remember the, the first company I worked for years ago that had profit sharing, and I remember getting a check from them at the end of the year. I'm going, what's this? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So. And that's, that's, that's basically how it works. So if you do have employees, you do have to put something in for them. Sure. Um, but you can, you can set the plan up so that more goes in for the owners, right. uh, which is understandable because it is your company, but you still have to put something in. Or if you have no employees and you don't even have to worry, right. it, it can all go in for you, you know? Yeah. And, and understanding the, and, and I think you mentioned this, the doing it on a pre-tax basis and things. So it's, it's all of these concepts, right. That, that you work with every day, Ryan, that are, I don't say they're foreign to us business owners, but they're kind of cloudy because we're so yeah, focused on exactly. our business. Yep. So talk a little bit about that and in, in how you sure. can So some that. other things, right? So most people now are on a high deductible health savings plan, right? That's kind of what we've all been pushed on to. Uh, and with co what comes with that is the ability to put money into a health savings account, an HSA. Yep. So most people are doing that wrong because they put the money in and they take it out, right? So it's you, do, you get a benefit of the tax deduction, but you don't get the real benefit, which is the growth on the money, the compounding. Okay. So within those HSAs, you can actually invest the money in things like stocks or stock mutual funds uh -huh. where you can get growth. So the real way I advocate people doing it is that put the money in there and let it grow for five to 10 years before you take any money out. So that when you take the money out, you're taking out your gains and your principal, your contributions keep working for you so that you're almost paying these costs for free. Right. Oh, that's fascinating. See, I've never heard anybody talk about that, um, which, which is another reason why, you know, working with Ryan and going through his course and things is helpful because that's just another little gem of, well, I thought that was for my health expense. Well, it is. <laughs> But you can leverage it in, That's right. in, in a way and, and generate more revenue to pay those expenses and not touch the principal. That's fascinating. Yeah, because like a lot of companies, even within that, you know, it, typically you have it with an HSA provider that's not right. either offering you a good investment selection or even on your conservative money, just in cash, they're not paying you any interest. So I advocate like people look at that. Like I have my HSA at Fidelity. Right. Because they just, if you want no risk, you can put it into a money market fund right now and make a little over 4% interest, Right, which is phenomenal. And you can take more risk with it, but at a minimum, you're at least getting, you know, some, some reasonable interest on your money sitting there. Right. And, and that's one of the, the benefits of, of Ryan and your perspective is that you understand all these, I, dare I call them little strategies that sure. when you add them up, start saying, wow we were able to move in a direction by doing a, a few little things that, that you would, I, I assume when you meet with your clients, you're, you're strategizing, you're thinking about, okay, where are you? How many more years are you going to work? All of that so that you make those good decisions and risk tolerance, all of that. Yeah. To understand what's, what are the best steps for that client versus saying, well, here's my plan. Go, go follow my plan. Fitting me into your plan is awkward, but when you work with clients and, and you can strategize, I assume that's how you work with people and, and help them navigate this, this, this rat maze called retirement. Yeah. Right? yeah, that's right. So I try to keep it simple. Um, you know, every client has a one page plan where on one page, now it's mostly double sided, but <laughs> on that one page, everything is on there as far as, all right, here's your retirement goal. Here's how much money you're saving. Here's what we project you'll have at retirement. Um, here's what your investment strategy is. Here's, you know, the insurance strategy. Um, here's some tax, you know, recommendations. And then estate planning wise, here's here's where things are at. And then yeah. once a year, we review that 
because it's a living, breathing document. As soon as you make this plan, it changes literally okay. probably the next hour, right? Yeah. And so that's the that's the framework that everyone should have, whether you're doing it on your own or working with an advisor. So you can come back to that and be like, okay, this is my plan. Does this still work? Right. Or something changed in my life that I need to change this, this, or that. It might not be everything, but you've got a starting point, right? You said you've got the the fundamentals, the foundation that you can you can build upon. Yeah. And that's really cool. I love the one page thing because too many times, I mean, I've met with lots of financial advisors in my life, right? And they pull out the binder and they start. <laughs> that's <going> right. Like, <laughs> um, a one pager I can get my head around. That's right. Number, one. Number two, when you're 50 and older, I think one of the things that a lot of us are starting to experience are parents who are, are needing long-term care. And sometimes we are coming to the table to help that. But then also some parents who are are passing away and leaving a sizable inheritance to us. And yeah. that's a chunk of change. What do you do with that? And and you can help people navigate all of that, right? And plan for it. That's right. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do have clients that, you know, their parents are passing on and they're selling the family home or they're inheriting some assets they had and figuring out what to do with that. And it would, you know, again, looking at their plan, like where does this fit in? Um, and, and maybe it helps them to get to retirement sooner, or maybe it helps them to do some things they always wanted to, uh, you know, vacations or buy another house or help their children with college. Like there's a lot of great things that can be done with this wealth transfer that's occurring. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you do this right now is, is having those, um, conversations before the event happens. Right. So yes. my mom just yeah. passed away last year. She was 93. Uh, Guess what? Yeah. We had anticipated this. Right? Yeah, yeah. She had everything set up, but so that when she passed away, it wasn't this, oh my, what? No, everything was kind of in yeah. order. And that's what I really encourage people to do is to reach out, have a conversation with Ryan. You're going to get a link to his website, his podcast, his, his online course. Start start educating yourself around this, this idea of, well, what is retirement? Because it's it's actually bigger than what most of us think, because we do have parents and we do have kids and we do have legacy and in. There are just lots of pieces and parts and oh my goodness, it does change, right? Yeah. Um, but we need somebody, we need a counselor, a, a confidant, a, a consultant per se, to to come alongside of us, to be on the same side of the table. I, I guess that's how I- That's I, right. I, yeah, right? exactly. And, yep, and yeah, I mean, that's when you go hire an attorney, they you don't have to worry like, are they telling me this because they're going to get a free vacation if I buy this will or this this trust, right? right? And that's- you do have to worry about that because I've actually been writing a book that's going to come out in a couple of weeks called Fiduciary, really exploring this more and the concept that, you know, people sell garbage, right? That's how I call it. Advisors sell garbage and it ends up hurting the clients. And so if you can avoid like investing or buying this garbage, you're going to help yourself tremendously. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, well, tell us, tell us, right. How do, I mean, I'm sure we could be here for days talking about all this stuff because yeah. it's it just goes deeper deeper. But where do people find out more about you in the in the podcast and the course and all that? What's the best the best place site to go? to go would be retirewithryan.com. Um if they want to see past podcast episodes, I also have some YouTube videos, the course, some information about my book. Um and if they're interested in a one-on-one -on -one consultation, then um it has a link to a free assessment. And from there, we could book a 20 minute call, find out what they're looking for and if we're a fit and what those next steps would be. Love it. Love yeah. it. Retirewithryan.com is the website. We're going to have all that in the show notes. So if you're out walking the dog, driving around or exercising, <laughs> no worries. We got you covered because I want you to um, educate yourself around retirement because it's coming faster than you imagine. And yeah, we need to do some yeah unfortunately. And uh, Ryan's got a lot of resources, a lot of education. So go to retirewithryan.com and find out how Ryan can help you uh, plan for your retirement. Ryan, thank you, man. This has been really, really enlightening and, and fun to, to talk with you about this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael.